Alright, welcome back guys. Um, I got a couple test pieces of wood here. Um, plywood, 2x4, and then this thicker, better plywood. Um, what I'm trying to do is make like a marine board on here. Um, marine board, if you've ever seen, is very expensive. I'm not trying to spend that much. Um, so when I actually bought our house, we got two of these large buckets of paint, I think, left here. Um, this looks like a dry lock waterproofer so I think this one might be our go-to um, but this one here is also like a interior latex water cleanable um, so it hopefully might be good uh, we're gonna run some tests here um, see which one does it put a couple layers on there um, when you are dealing with like older stuff like this always good to have a mixer on hand with a drill um, so you don't have to do it by hand so let me put you guys down so I can get this mixed up Alright, sorry for the bad lighting. Um, so hopefully this stuff here will kind of go back. It seems like it might, so let's go. Alright, so that one turned um, back in the paint. Um, so let's grab the next one. So I did end up washing this in between. Um, right about here you can feel some pressure. So let's see how this mixes up. Alright, so I got them both mixed up here. Um, I got our lines here. This is going to be for the blue and white bucket side. These three here. And this is going to be for the orange bucket. Uh, I'm going to do a layer, a couple layers on each of them. Come back, do my scratch tests and stuff like that and kind of see where we're at. Um, and see how well it's actually holding up. Um, just because I don't want to go out and spend the couple bucks it's going to cost for... Um, the marine or the not a couple bucks, but the way more cost it's going to cost for the marine board. Um, I already got plywood, I can get some of that, and I can get um, the two by sixes and two by eights that I need for close to nothing if even I have to pay for it. Um, so let's give us a couple paints and see where we are. this one that has a dollar chic shine whatever you want to call it to um, sides aren't really that well but we'll get to that to see kind of how well it penetrated and how well it got into there same here now with the 2x4 this stuff has a little bit more of a shine um, you can tell too there's the crack kind of here over here you can tell with this uh, the dry lock that we used it ended up filling that crack in a little bit more um, versus down here where it's not as I want to say um, filled there's still crack mics 
crack lines in there where this one looks like only a spot that's not as that hole and we could easily fill that in with a more of the paint or a little bit of caulk something like that um, same goes for this table up here um, but there's not really a good need to show you that um, so I got a couple things here for testing it um, we go ahead and cut them open see kind of what the insides look like how what uh, sucked into the wood, uh, put a hole saw through it, and then also see how well it holds and resists against scraping and scratching and stuff like that with a brand new razor blade. Um, so let's get into it and see where it goes and see how all this stuff does, all right? So we're going to do a couple more tests that I forgot about. Um, heat test, got a propane torch here and put an open flame onto it. See which kind, which one resists it more, see which one helps, uh, stuff like that. And then I got a sander with I believe it's 80 grit, yep, 80 grit sandpaper, and then also 120 block. Um, these are gonna kinda see abrasion, stuff like that, see how long it can kinda hold up. Uh, we'll do a spot test on each of them here. Um, with these here, I'm gonna kinda do something like between here and here, um, just because I made sure to coat the in, in, uh, middle part and inner part a little better than that on the outer parts here where it's a little thinner. Um, but all right, let's begin. The first one we're gonna do here, maybe a scratch test, see how well it kind of resists scratching and abrasions and stuff like that. This part here was gonna be the abrasion test with the razor blade. Uh, see how well high in the help helps from chipping and stuff like that. So as you can tell, with this here, dust it off, a um, little rub down would be fine. This one here did go deeper, um, so I don't know if that's going to be better or worse. Same kind of along all these. Um, this one it seems like it went deeper versus this one. Here you can kind of tell where it's getting through the wood, uh, getting through the paint to the wood. Um, and over here, it honestly doesn't look like that. Looks more like it just kind of uh, scraped the top layer um, and didn't even get to the wood. So, yeah. And so next here, I'm gonna do the uh, sanding portion um, with the uh, sanding block first. This is gonna be kind of, I wanna say like the normal wear and tear, um, normal something rubbing, something kind of dragging, seeing how the paint's going to hold up if, say, it, it, the floorboard or wherever this is covering is exposed and something drags across it, uh, bags, sandy feet, sandy shoes, stuff like that. Um, so let's get into it and see how well it's going to hold up in set. This here kind of sanded away, did get down a little closer to the wood. Um, versus this side here, where it looks like it didn't even go through. Um, you can feel the, the separation here, like this is way thicker than over here. Um, but it feels like it didn't even get through. Up on the plywood, doesn't look like too much at all occurred. Um, and same on the 2x4, doesn't look like anything really occurred. So now let's try the battery powered sander and kind of give it a go and see how well, let's say this is going to be a lot excessive use, excessive wear and tear, stuff like that. So let's get into it and see how well it holds up. <laughs> Thank you. 
Alright, so I got the light in here so you guys can see a little better. Um, sanding on this nicer plywood, uh, which is way more expensive. Um, it did pretty well. It did thin out. You can tell right about here it's thinned out from the thing from the sander. Um, over here you can tell the same, uh, but it does not look as bad. Um, it honestly still feels like there's a very thick layer there. Um, and just seems like that kind of smoothed it out. If we move up to here, um, you can tell, see this latex side here definitely started doing a lot of chipping away um, and didn't really hold on as well. Versus this size here, yeah, it looks like it did get deep there um, and it still is a little rubber and tacky, um, but it doesn't look as bad if you kind of compare the two. And then if you move back here, you can tell on like the 2x4, the normal lumber that you'd be using for the cross supports. Um, this here, it seemed to hold it very well and not chip away. Um, and now we're going to go ahead and cut them open. Actually, I'm going to run some screws into these and see how well they hold up against screws coming in and out. If they chip bad or if they don't. Alrighty. The next step here, I'm going to drill some screws in. Um, I got drywall screws just because they have threads all the way up, so it'll help grip and pull it through. Um, I'm going to kind of sink them in, see if we get any chip in here with starting them here. The plywood like normal, you got chips um, here and here. It doesn't seem too bad, but let's get them in and see how well they hold up. I do have the wrong bit on here, of course, because why not? I did not pre-drill these either. These are just going in straight. And that broke the tip. All right. I had a new tip that's meant for these. So let's move up to the plywood. So as you can tell, this one chipped away, sunk in, um, has way more chip marks on that outer part um, versus this side here where it does have some fraying um, but it looks like that it that held a little held better um, over here some popping apart uh, it is ripping big chunks, but was hard to get apart. Where over here, not really flaring, uh, falling apart that much. These front holes on the better plywood um, seem to be doing just fine. All right, and so the final test um, for it with it in this shape before we start putting bigger holes in here is going to be the fire test to see how well it holds against fire. Alrighty, so that's going to be any more heat than this things will ever take. Um, I am in a well-ventilated area um, and have the safety precautions, fire extinguisher, stuff like that. Um, so let's take a look here and see how well that was held up. Alright, so over here uh, we did get some bubbling from it. Um, this side it just seemed kind of more to like put a little char on it. Something that looks like it could be wiped away. This one looks like it did bubble up more here again. Um, and again here bubbling up, but here it just kind of charred, which might be better. Alrighty, so here's the plug from the first one. Um, it doesn't look... Like it really seeped in too much. This one, it does look like it did at least get down about a layer. Same here. And like I said, it didn't look like it really sucked down too much on that one.
All right, so here is the 2x4, um, the interior latex paint. Like I said, it didn't look like there was that much of a layer or anything like that. Um, this side here, you can kind of tell there is a thicker layer, um, which might be helpful, more helpful to keeping water off. Again, there's that thicker layer we were talking about um, versus that upper one where you, like, really you can't even tell that there is, like, a layer, it seems like, on there. Um, and then, like, this here it did chip way more on the interior latex paint um, versus this side. That seems like it didn't, and then... Uh, you can kind of tell here if it'll focus for me. Um, so there's this crack here that it does look like it did kind of fill that in better. Yeah, it kind of filled that crack in better. Whereas this side that just kind of like seems like it didn't do too much.